Namaste. So today I'd like to talk a little more about what we went over yesterday, in yesterday's video, which if you haven't seen, you should look at it first. Here's a link. Yesterday we talked about beauty and how beauty is the key to love and compassion is the key to enlightenment. So if you've never tried it, Buddha had an exercise called metta. And basically in metta, you focus on every being that you encounter, human or not, and you just wish them the best. You wish them love, you wish them peace, happiness, freedom from suffering, intelligence, self-realization, and so on. Well, if you do this for more than a little while, you find yourself getting totally ecstatic. <laughs> so, the reason for this is that, as Ramana Maharshi is famous for saying, he was asked, how should we treat others? And Ramana replied, there are no others. All is self. Now, of course, the ego wants to differ with this. The ego wants to say, no, there's me, and then there's everybody else. <laughs> but of course, this just leads to suffering because we're becoming attached to our identity. But our identity is temporary. It changes as we grow, as we age, as we mature. So if something changes, that means if we're attached to it, we're gonna suffer. Like this body. If we're attached to this body, if we think this body is myself, then what happens when it gets old? <laughs> what happens when it gets diseased and eventually dies? See? So why is the world this way? Why is everything the way it is? And the answer is, of course, Shiva Shakti and their relationship. And what is that relationship? Well, Shiva, as we've been over so many times, is Nirguna Brahman. He is the original Brahman without any qualities, without any activities. And what is Shakti? Saguna Brahman. When Brahman comes into manifestation, which it does naturally as a matter of course, then it assumes all qualities. See, in, in other words, instead of being nothing, like Saguna Brahman, Nirguna Brahman is everything, yin and yang. Huh? That's why they are portrayed as male and female. So even in cultures that don't have the concept of yin and yang, then there can be Shiva Shakti, which is a metaphor explaining the very same thing. So you might say, well, I like one metaphor better than another. Well, that's your personal choice. But I think the Shiva Shakti metaphor is superior because of its richness. If Shiva and Shakti are a couple, if they are, so to speak, made for each other, huh? they can have all kinds of pastimes, all kinds of activities, conversations, uh, they can have a romantic relationship. They can ha experience everything there is to experience. 
And the reason the universe is the way it is, is because of this relationship between Shiva and Shakti. The very, very first shloka of Saundarya Lahari by Shankaracharya says, in part, in part that if Shakti was not active and powerful, then Shiva wouldn't be able to even budge. He wouldn't be able to move. Huh? And in the next video, tomorrow's video, I'm going to tell a story that explains even more about, about this topic, why the world is the way it is. Why are people the way they are? But really, it's because of this relationship, because Shiva is the ultimate male figure. He is a perfect sage. He is in complete enlightenment, complete detachment, complete non-doing. If he does anything at all, or appears to, it's only because Shakti wants him to. Shakti creates Shiva's form and all other forms. This is revealed in the Lalita Sahasranama. She is called Shiva. So there's Shiva and Shiva. Shiva and Shakti. And they combined are the Supreme Brahman. So where there is Shiva, there is Shakti. And where there is Shakti, there is Shiva. And for this reason, the worship of uh, Shakti in the mood of Bhakti or spiritual love leads to the same liberation, the same moksha, the same enlightenment as the worship of Shiva as the Supreme Father. See, the religious path, the devotional path, the meditational path, the path of knowledge, all lead to the same place. So all four yogas, karma yoga, bhakti yoga, raja yoga, and jnana yoga, ultimately bring the same realization. And what is that realization? <laughs> it's this realization of ultimate beauty. The relationship between Shiva and Shakti is extremely beautiful. You should read any of the tantras. Uh, more than 90% of the tantras are conversations between Shiva and Shakti, where Shakti inquires from Shiva, and then he answers her. And she inquires not for herself, because she's already Brahman. Uh, she doesn't need to become more self-realized. <laughs> But she is asking for the welfare of the whole universe, for Shiva to reveal his knowledge. So when the perfect sage speaks, he gives the most beautiful truths, the most powerful knowledge that protects the entire creation from what? From ignorance. He gives the knowledge that is so high that once one knows it, there is nothing more to know. The supreme knowledge is that by which one transcends the mind, transcends even consciousness. This is Nibbana or Nibbana, huh? the ultimate realization. But then what does Shakti do when she's not in having pastimes with Shiva. She's a warrior. Huh? She's the original Amazon, <laughs> female warrior goddess. And she protects the universe by killing the demons. This is her style, this is her mood, her pastime. So it's like the ultimate sage and the ultimate warrior get together, and between them, they create, maintain, protect, and even destroy the universe. Now, 
this relationship is so fundamental. It's so perfect. It can't be improved upon. It's the original relationship. And this shows us how human society should be structured. That is, there should be a group or a tribe or a class of enlightened people, self-realized people. I'm not talking about religious people. I'm not talking about devotional people or I'm not talking about knowledgeable people because they may have various good qualities, but they're not fully realized. When we say a sage, we mean someone who has complete enlightenment, full self-realization. When they speak, they speak for the good of the whole. Nobody else can do that. Everybody else has some narrow interests. The religious people want their religion, their particular views to be supreme. They have an agenda. The mercantile people are only interested in making money. So they only want to speak about things that will help them make money. The kshatriyas, the people who are into power, only want to know how to aggregate and keep their power. And the brahmanas are only interested in knowledge. Everybody has some agenda. Everybody has some narrow interest. Only the sage can speak for the welfare of all because only the sage is rooted in consciousness. And consciousness, as we've said before in the Quaternity video, is another link. <laughs> consciousness is the one thing everybody has in common. It's the one interest that is dear to all. So when this sage speaks, because he has realized consciousness, he can speak to the welfare of all sentient beings. Nobody else can do that. Now, ma, <laughs> ma and pa, <laughs> pa is the sage, ma is the warrior, and her first duty is to protect the sage. From what? Demons, the ignorant people, the enemies of knowledge, the narrow-minded people, the stupid people. Because they're only self-interested, they're egoistic, they're selfish, they're attached, they're lusty, and they're willing to break any kind of moral principles to get their way. Sound like anybody who's been in the news a lot lately? Hmm. Anyway, the demoniac people are killed by the goddess. This is her pastime. This is her style. And this shows that what is needed in human society is not only a class of people who are enlightened, but there should be another class of people dedicated to protecting them. See, and in a sane, mature human society, these are the brahmanas and the kshatriyas. The brahmanas' only business is to realize Brahman and to live in Brahman. That's the meaning of the word, the actual meaning of the word brahmachari. Brahma means Brahman, and achara means to dwell, to reside. And Ari means one who. So Brahmachara Ari. Brahmachari means someone who is residing in Brahman, who lives in consciousness, who has realized the ultimate truth, who knows nirvana. Then there should be a class of kshatriyas, warriors, who protect those sages and carry out their instructions. Because if you become a specialist at war and politics and economics, which is everything needed to maintain the state, the society, the human civilization, then you need somebody who is on the other side to give you guidance, 
to help you see what is right and wrong, what should be done and what should not be done. And these are the sages. So the sages and the warriors should work hand in hand to protect the human society from ignorance. Now, of course, today this is completely mixed up. There are all kinds of phony teachers who aren't self-realized and who are trying to make a business out of teaching the Vedic truths. And then you have a bunch of politicians who are only self-interested. Actually, they're like merchants, you know? They're selfish, they're greedy. They're not interested in the welfare of the people. So they're actually demons. Because one of the things about demons is that they're unqualified, but they're ready to take any big position if they can. In other words, they're insincere. They have no integrity. A person with integrity would never overstep their bounds. They would never accept a position that's beyond their qualifications, that's beyond their ability to do well. That's why we have a principle on this channel to only speak about the things that we have personally experienced. It's not just theory. It's based on practical experience. So this knowledge, once known, in other words, realized, not just known in terms of words and symbols, book learning, but realized as a practical thing. Huh? Once one knows and has realized this ultimate knowledge, then one can speak, one can give help, one can give guidance to the whole human society, not just this nation or that nation or this uh, ethnic group or that one, huh? or this tribe or that other tribe. No, all. And that is the specific qualification of the sage. And the specific qualification of the, the king, the righteous king, the pious king, is that they know, they recognize, and they protect those sages who live only for the ultimate benefit of all human society to bring them to complete self-realization. Aung Tatsa. Aung Shakti Aung.